Someone liked my Warrior Cats reviews so much, they commissioned me to read this cat book. This book has less murder and more jokes than Warriors? I like it better already! Argofunk book review, Argofunk book review. Marco and Polo are brothers. Marco dreams of leaving the house and living on a ranch, whereas Polo just wants to eat. Last Christmas, Polo ate a full roll of ribbon and all the tinsel on the tree. He was rushed to the vet, who diagnosed him with a terrible stomach tumor. Nope, he's just a fat kitty. Marco and Polo sneak out the side door and wait for their owners to leave before escaping. They meet a mouse who doesn't want to be eaten. Polo is disgusted by the idea of eating mice. Eating tinsel is fine, but mice? Yuck. So they do what I would do. They go to the local Big Burger. Stray cats like to gather there to sing and eat out of the trash cans. The humans who work at Big Burger yell at the cats for making noise and spray them with a hose. Aren't humans the worst? A friendly calico named Carlotta decides to help Marco and Polo since they're obviously new to being strays. She introduces them to a group of cats called the Club of Mysteries. They're dedicated to solving the great mysteries of life. Like, why don't humans have fur? As far as I can tell, the only thing they do all day is lie in a garage and complain about humans. Sounds like a decent club. The leader of the club is Texas Jake. He's openly jealous of Marco and Polo because Carlotta likes them. So he tries to get rid of them by giving them impossible to solve challenges. It's sort of like the story of Hercules. The first challenge is to break into a mean dog's doghouse. The dog's jealously guarded treasure ends up being an old gray sock. The second challenge is to figure out where water goes after it rains. Marco and Polo travel through the sewers where they are attacked by rats and washed out to a river. They're momentarily split up and cry out for each other. Marco! Polo! It's a dramatic scene, but I giggled a little because it sounded like they were playing Marco Polo in the water. The third and final challenge is to figure out where humans go when they use cars. They sneak into a car which goes to a construction zone. Marco figures they must be on a ranch because everybody's wearing hats like cowboys and cranes have giant necks, so they must be horses. Sadly, just when they finish their last challenge, there's a series of unfortunate events. They get covered with dirt when a crane picks them up by accident. The mean dog returns and injures Texas Jake. But worst of all, Burger Barn gets a new dumpster. Now the cats can't eat free food whenever they want! Oh! All the cats immediately decide that humans aren't so bad after all, and they go back home to their owners. Marco and Polo are shocked to find their owners have replaced them with kittens. It's been months! How could they be replaced so quickly? Oh, those treacherous humans. Marco and Polo fight with the kittens until they convince the kittens that they're heroes who braved the dangerous and fascinating outside world. The end. Post-book follow-up. This book is hilarious. My favorite part were all the jokes where cats complain about humans. Carlotta thinks it's unfair her owner can have friends over, but she can't. Boots complains he shouldn't have gotten in trouble for jumping on the table and attacking the people's food. Texas Jake fantasizes about slapping his owner and saying, No! Bad human, don't do that. So it's just hilarious. All sorts of funny jokes all throughout the entire book like that. Even some really clever jokes, like jokes where the cats name every single species of animals in existence and they somehow forget that humans exist. That's that's sort of a clever joke that kid readers might not pick up on, but I, I picked up on several clever jokes like that. The action scenes are not so good, they're passable. I wasn't engrossed with any of them, but they got the job done. The book's problems are minor. It starts off as a serious book and doesn't start with the humorous scenes until chapter two. I'm not sure starting such a funny book 
with the serious segment was the right idea. Also, I thought the Carlotta chapter was a little slow paced, but neither of those problems are a big deal. I could see other reviewers not thinking they're problems. Overall, I'm glad I was asked to read this book. I'm a dog person myself, but I was laughing pretty much the whole time. These cats are great, and now I want to read the other books in the series. I give The Grand Escape a 9 out of 10.